Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Prison Life 11, and you reached your boy JR today. The story that I'm going to tell you guys and what I'm going to uh, put in front of y'all is something that I went through when I first, uh, to begin, I started my time in another state. And then I landed up getting shot to Oklahoma. And they sent me to a county jail that held federal inmates. And there, there was, it wasn't as I, as, as I was uh, uh, taught when I was in Los Angeles. It wasn't the same as I was taught when I was in a lot of other areas. In this place, everybody congregated together. You got Indians playing with whites, blacks playing with Mexicans, so on and so on. And I wasn't used to that. But that's not the story I'm telling. Anyhow, so we get they get me ready to ship me over. They're gonna get ready to lock me up and put me in a bus and transfer me states. <laughs> and as I'm in there, it's me and four other inmates. And uh, one of the inmates told me they uh, will say they called him Spooky. He was from Oklahoma. And he was telling me how things were done and the way they ran it out there. And he also let me know that they held child molesters, rapists, things of that, uh, 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 domestic violences of men beating on their mothers and stuff like that. And that nobody would scratch them off the yard. So, uh, anyway, I get there. And when I get there, like I said, it was a jail first, federal holding. And uh, there was this big, huge, huge black guy. He was a big, big, big mother. He was a big man. And there was also that it came with me in the ride was two young white men. And at that time, you got to understand, they had uh, big things of, of tops, tobacco, and they had... Jesus, they had a lot of things that you just couldn't just get now these days. These days, that's, if you had that, people there, the prison system would be a lot more, less rowdy. And so, uh, you know, things were cool. I was there for a little bit. Everything normal, going to chow, coming back, hand cleaning my floor, you know, sweep up, getting up, doing my workout, getting my routine, doing my routine, not keeping things ready, getting my mind right. And uh, one day, so, uh, like I was telling you, this, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, we'll call him Joe. Joe was the biggest African-American man in the, in the facilities, what I heard, and in that pod. So, these two young, young men, white men, I don't know what they thought. I don't know what, who trained them, who schooled these guys. And so they come in, and this guy, Joe, is smoking a, a cigarette, smoking a rolled-up top cigarette, and has his arm holding up like this, and he's just hitting it. And everybody's doing laps. Not everybody, but the majority is doing laps in the pod while the door is still open. And I don't know exactly what happened, what these dudes said to him, but the next thing you know... You could hear him because he has a deep voice, a deep, like, uh, <sighs> type of voice, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, he says, hey, yeah, you guys come on in here. You guys share this with me. They went in, and I was doing laughs. I was, me and one of my partners who ended up turning into a universal Aryan brother, me and him were doing laughs. And all of a sudden, you see him walk in. We're still doing laughs, doing our push-ups, getting our workout on. And uh, we passed by, it's crazy how it worked out, because we passed by at the same time that these dudes are saying, all right, thank you, appreciate it, appreciate it, all right, Joe, thanks. And uh, he's all, where are you guys going? And he put his, both his arms up like this and blocked, blocked the doorway. And like I said, imagine somebody six foot five in that area, big, big, big stout dude. And uh, he's like, where do you guys think you're going? 
and he's all, you know, we're going back out there, and we just smoked a cigarette to share with us, and he's all, nah, everything has a price. Everything has a price. And the next thing you know, you see him step forward back into the cell, me and uh, the homie from the UAB, we were walking by, and you see him just, boom, he just hits dude, hits him, boom, drops the first one in front of him. And then you hear him, because the pod got quiet, you hear him hit the other dude, he goes quiet. And then uh, you see him walk out, he closes the door, and the type of person I am, I felt like I wanted to just get in there and help him, but I would have been crossing the lines. I would have been getting into something that could involve my people and that's not allowed. So I just had to rot my mind while I was walking circles around and seeing these dudes, hearing these dudes grunting all year is things I'm not going to say right now because it's just, it's too much. But you're grunting and groaning and screaming. And uh, they were getting penetrated. They were getting hurt. And uh, so the next thing you know, you know, finally me and a uh, dude from UAB, I was like, just get this door popped. Let's tell this dude it's enough. So uh, we're about to make our round again, and the and I guess they hit the uh, button. The dude hit the button, like the emergency button, where they come on the speaker, and he got them to open his door. He comes out, and shortly after, you see him walking with buckets of water, and he pour water on him, and the blood on his floor and on his bed and stuff. And he said that there was an accident; his toilet flooded, so he needed a new new linen because there was blood all over it and these kids but anyway that was i jumped the story these kids come out and poor kids man they came out they never in their life thought they would have ever got their manner took that way they never ever ever would have thought that this was going to be something that would have made them less than a man everyone can can handle their own until something comes in front of them that they can't handle and these kids decided that they were going to go on ahead and share a cigarette. They had already stepped out of out sideways and trying to get free stuff from somebody who was an obvious predator. So these kids come out. They come walking out, and they see the blood uh, stain the back of their pants, and they're bleeding bad. They ended up having to metaflight both of these kids. They metaflighted them both out of the county and uh, took them to whatever hospital was in that area, I guess. And, uh, or wherever they went, but, uh, so I, this is something that I thought about for a long time. I thought about this because when I was, when I hit big time, doing big time, when I finally got to the, to the joint and hit the, and, and started going to war and started doing crazy things, you know, I was really, 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 I paid attention to what was happening around me. I paid attention to even if I was looking straight, my peripheral was looking side to side. Because what you got to understand is when you hit the penitentiary and no one's your friend. No one's your friend. No one's your brother. No one cares about you. Except for your family. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story. I'm going to uh, uh, get a uh, start. Because uh, I got shot in the head. I got shot in the head. Uh, shot in the arm and uh, thrown off a 20-foot building so my brain goes kind of slow and I forget things as I'm trying to tell you guys these stories, right? But I'm going to try and work on uh, uh, slowing down and telling you guys slower. And if there's anything that you guys want to hear about, if there's any questions, like well, if you got families in there or just anything that you want to know that you think you're on, the, you're on your way there and you want to know what might help you or anything like that, you go on ahead and you just you know comment me and let me know. But also, I'm a new channel, so I would really, truly appreciate it if you would spread the word around that I, I, I am speaking realness, and there's nothing coming out of me that's a lie, and I'm just trying to help the kids stay. My whole plan growing up as my time went on in the pen is I wanted to help the youth stay out of prison. So if you can show these youngsters these stories and just help them and help me continue to tell these stories, please subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like. And I would truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. And you guys keep your head up. Salute to all the real ones. And God bless you.